The topics diffusion, facilitated diffusion, osmosis and active transport can be quite easy, but they sometimes throw in some tricky graph questions. We're going to go through how to tackle those in this presentation. First of all, diffusion and facilitated diffusion. This first graph is asking you if you know the difference between what you would expect to find in facilitated diffusion and normal diffusion. Looking at the curves, there are two different descriptions. For curve A, the actual result, as concentration of glucose increases, the rate of glucose increases steeply at first and then levels off after about two and a half uh, millimoles per decimeter cubed. On curve B, however, the line continues to increase in a proportional manner. As a result, you know that curve B has to be simple diffusion because the rate of uptake is proportional to the concentration of glucose. So as you increase the concentration of glucose outside of the cell, more glucose is taken up. We've already described what you'd expect to find for curve A, but to explain it, curve A has to be facilitated diffusion because at the start, start bit here, whilst the line is increasing, facilitated diffusion has carrier proteins and they're still available. Glucose is a limiting factor. So at this point, as, more, as the glucose concentration increases, more can fit through the channel proteins in the cell surface membrane. However, once the graph has leveled off, the explanation for why it levels off is because the carrier proteins are saturated, they are full, they are now the limiting factor. No more glucose can fit through these per unit time. This is another classic graph asking you whether you know it's diffusion or facilitated diffusion. Again, we're increasing the concentration of glucose outside of a cell and measuring how quickly glucose is taken up. The description for this graph would be, as the concentration of glucose increases, the rate of uptake increases. Then, after a certain concentration of glucose, the graph levels off. To explain this graph, at the beginning, the concentration of glucose must be the limiting factor because the curve is increasing. This is the f explained in this first part marking point here. Then, once the graph has leveled off, the explanation for that is the number of protein carriers is limiting or all of them are occupied. You could also say that at this point the protein carriers are saturated. Because the line has levelled off, this has to be facilitated diffusion because this line indicates where it's levelled off that protein carriers are involved. If it was simple diffusion, the curve would have continued to increase in a linear fashion, in a proportional fashion. This is a slightly different situation where you're increasing the temperature and you're looking at the permeability of a cell surface membrane. This is measured by the concentration of chlorodynes that are found outside of a cell. So as more chlorodynes are lost through the cell surface membrane, the concentration outside increases. Now this question asks us to describe and explain. So there are two parts to this answer. The described part is as follows here. We've got a slow rise, then a sharp rise, and then it levels off. The explanation at the beginning, the slow rise is due simply to the diffusion rate increasing because of an increase in the kinetic energy. So this steep rise can't be due to kinetic energy, otherwise it would continue to increase in the same at the same gradient. This is due to after 50 degrees, the proteins have become denatured. The channel proteins and the carrier proteins have become denatured. They now allow any molecule to pass through them. They're not selective anymore. 
We have a different explanation for it levelling off this time. Because we're not increasing something like the concentration of chloridine, so we're not putting more chloridines outside of the cell, the reason this levels off is slightly different. It levels off because the concentration of chloridines inside and outside of the cell have become the same. They've reached equilibrium. So it levels off because the concentration of chloridines is equal either side of the cell surface membrane. There is no longer at this point a diffusion gradient across the cell surface membrane. We're next going to look at osmosis. As you should know, osmosis is a type of diffusion apart from it only involves the movement of water molecules from a less negative to a more negative water potential or down a water potential gradient or to a more negative water potential to a lower water potential. This is a classic type of graph where we're looking at the change in mass. So the change in mass will be due to gaining or losing water. Now the units is percentage change in mass and this is useful because it allows us to compare the results because the different potatoes that they will have used will have been different masses to start off with. So let's describe this graph. So the independent variable is the concentration of sucrose. As you increase the concentration of sucrose, the percentage change in mass decreases and starts to level off. You can also describe it in a slightly different way in that at lower concentrations of sucrose, the percentage change in mass is positive. At higher concentration of sucrose, the percentage change in mass is negative. So let's explain this then. At this point here, where the graph crosses the x-axis and the percentage change in mass is zero, this indicates that this is the concentration of sucrose that is actually in the potato. At concentrations of sucrose that are less than that, this indicates that the concentration of sucrose outside of the potato is less than the concentration of sucrose inside. So inside of the potato has a more negative water potential. So at this point here, as you can see from the explanation, water is moving into the potato cell. So anything below 0.35, water is moving into the potato cell. By osmosis, always get that point in, don't forget by osmosis. This increases the mass, the water moving into the potato is increasing the mass, and the most water has entered potato at 0.1. The explanation for this point where it crosses the x-axis is here. So first of all, it's 0.35, the concentration of sucrose inside the potato is 0.35. So there's no net osmosis, there's no change in mass. So the volume of water moving in is the same as the volume of water moving out. There is no water potential gradient at this point. The explanation for after this point is actually water is moving out of the potato cell. It's getting lighter because water is moving out of the potato by osmosis. Again, this is another osmosis experiment where we are increasing the concentration of sucrose outside of a, um, a potato cylinder. We've got a different measurement this time. We've got a ratio. Again, this allows comparison because the length of the potatoes would have been different to start off with. If you're going to describe this graph, as the concentration of sucrose increases, the ratio increases. It actually starts to get more steep. If we're going to explain this, the concentration in, of sucrose inside the potato, you'd be looking at a ratio of 1, because a ratio of 1 indicates that the length at the beginning and the end are the same. So if you're going to read off your graph, you go across and then down, so indicating that the concentration of sucrose inside the potato was 0.3. Below 0.3 indicates that the potato was bigger at the end of the experiment than at the start because if you divide the end length by the start length you get a number that's less than 1. Anything that is after 0.3 if you divide the end length by the start length 
indicates that the potato has got shorter. We're now going to look at active transport. This is a particularly complicated graph with a lot to say about it. The first clue that this has got something to do with active transport is that you've got two different curves with and without oxygen indicating that respiration is occurring in curve Y and that either anaerobic or no respiration is occurring in curve Z. So let's describe our curves first. For curve Y, as you increase the concentration of magnesium ions, the curve increases quickly and then the curve starts, doesn't start to level off, but it starts to increase less rapidly. To describe curve Z, as you increase the concentration of magnesiums in the solution, the curve doesn't increase, and then after point B, the curve starts to increase proportionally. Looking at curve Z, this, because there's no uptake between points A and B, and then suddenly, after a certain concentration of magnesium ions in the solution, there is an uptake, indicates that this is simple diffusion. So between points A and B, the concentration inside the cell is higher than outside. So there's no uptake after point, between points B and C. So after point B, you've got a proportional increase. So this indicates that it's diffusion, because as you increase the concentration of magnesium ions, the rate of uptake is directly proportional. At point B, this must be the point where you've got equilibrium. So after point B, the concentration of magnesium ions in the solution is higher than inside the cell. Looking at curve Y with oxygen, the fact that you've got any uptake at all between points A and B, so this must be active transport because you've got uptake in the presence of oxygen, whereas without oxygen you have no uptake. You can look at marking point B for this explanation. Marking point A on here, the question was just asking for a difference between diffusion and active transport. Here we've got a, another graph looking at conditions with oxygen and conditions without oxygen and the amount of sulphate taken in. So if, again, if you're going to describe as time increases, in the aerobic conditions, the amount taken in increases and it starts to get less, less of an increase. In anaerobic conditions, the total amount increases and then it levels off after about three hours. If we're going, looking for an explanation for this, then anaerobic conditions, you've got two options. It can either be simple diffusion, some evidence that it could be diffusion, in this line here, is it's increasing in a directly proportional manner and then it levels off. Now it's leveling off because the diffusion gradient is lost. You could have equal concentrations of ions both inside and outside of the cell. If the question said both, what's the evidence that both involve active transport? Well, aerobic will produce more energy more ATP. So you've got a steeper gradient. You've got a greater uptake of ions, which is illustrated by this point here. An explanation for this one levelling off and the other one not levelling off, if they're both using active transport, is that ATP is limiting at this point, so you've not got enough energy. Or active transport might stop. You've not got enough energy to continue active transport at this point. So there are two possible explanations for this line, diffusion or active transport. Again we've got another graph where we're looking at something that could be stopping respiration, leading us down the idea that it could be active transport. This time we've got inhibitors, with and without inhibitor, and these inhibit respiration, these inhibitors, enzymes involved in respiration. So you've got less respiration and you've got more respiration. So less energy being made, more energy being made in respiration. 
sorry, I should say energy being released from respiration because energy is not made. Silly mistake. Just make sure you don't do it in your exams. If you're going to dis describe the difference in the curves, without inhibitor, you've got a faster rate of increase, a faster rate of absorption of potassium ions than without an inhibitor. Both of them, however, the rate does start to decrease. In the, with inhibitor, it does level off after about 60 minutes. So, in question A, it was asking what methods of absorption are both of them. So, with the inhibitor, it has to be diffusion because no energy is available. Because you've got the inhibitor, the enzyme's not working, so respiration stops, you've not got enough energy. Without an inhibitor, it's absorbed by active transport. An explanation why this one has to be active transport is because you've got a faster increase, you've got a faster rate of uptake, you've got a steeper line, so faster rate of uptake in, with the presence of respiration happening. So more energy is increasing the rate of uptake, so it has to be active transport. Part B is asking why, with the presence of an inhibitor, has the graph levelled off? Well, the graph has levelled off because, again, it's diffusion. And at this point here, we've reached equilibrium. So we've reached equilibrium, so the concentration of ions inside and outside of the cell are the same. We've looked at some graph questions. Now we're going to look at a long answer question. You have to make sure you know how to answer long answer questions on most topics. They are usually easy marks. This is an explain question. So explain is usually asking for why or how. You can often start these questions with because. In this case, it's asking you to explain how each method works. So let's look at the mark scheme on the next slide. So for simple diffusion, you've got um, defining what diffusion is and then how the molecules can get directly into the cell, so direct, directly through the bilayer. No requirement for protein channels or carriers. Next we've got facilitated diffusion. Again, what it is from high to low con movement from high to low concentration. But this time you have to use channel protein and proteins is underlined. So either channel or carrier proteins. You get a bonus point for here if you actually refer to a glucose channel. And the idea that the protein changes shape as the molecule moves across the membrane. No energy is required in facilitated diffusion. There are often more marking points available for active transport. Again, a definition of what it is, movement of molecules against a concentration gradient. Now, I don't agree with this point on the mark scheme. You usually don't get a marking point, so never in your answer put channel protein, even though it's got it here um, for active transport. You usually say carrier protein is a safe bet. So it uses carrier proteins, they are specific. By specific you mean that only one type of carrier can fit one type of molecule. They require ATP and the energy is used to change the shape of the protein so it can pull the molecule across the membrane. All in all this is a nice easy nine marks.